The Raiders going into L.A. playing the Chargers. The upstart Arizona Cardinals taking on San Fran. And the New England Patriots fresh off a win. Going into Dallas to take on the Cowboys fresh off an embarrassing, humiliating loss. Anyway, it's time. Part three of the NFL presidential address. We're going to take apart all of those games. I have a promo for you guys coming up, and we'll end this show with a 6.2 team teaser that I have already bet. Okay, let's get straight into it. The Raiders plus five and a half against the LA Chargers. The total here has been bet down from 48 to 47 and a half. Let me just start by saying this. The Raiders are not a very good team, and we saw that against the Steelers. I grant you the Steelers are one of the best D units in the league, but Jimmy G has now struggled to move the ball two games in a row. The only way to beat the Chargers, and that is with any team in the league, is to keep pace with them. This Chargers team is going to score. This team is going to score all year long. They are second in yards in the league after three games. Third in yards gained in the air. And they have the top 10 in points scored. They are averaging 28.7 points per game. 28.7. The Raiders have combined for only 28 points in their last two games combined. And they only put up 17 against Denver. 17. The number seven is important. Miami put up 70. Anyway, keep in mind, Jimmy G has thrown six interceptions in three games. That's two interceptions a game. This is shocking and telling. This team has massive offensive line issues that aren't helping the run or the pass. And when you talk about the Chargers, well, I'm bullish on this Chargers team. And although their coach is doing everything he can to lose games, this team is stacked on offense. And Herbert, or Herbert, is an absolute beast. He also has incredible hair, but that's a different story. Anyway, the biggest issue for the Chargers right now is their pasty. In every game so far this season, they have allowed a 47-plus pass against them. 47-plus yard pass against them, including a 70-yard gain from the Titans, from Ryan Tannehill. But given they are playing the Raiders, I think it's a moot point. I don't even think Jimmy G could throw the ball 47 yards. Anyway, I know we're like laying chalk in a division game here. I don't care. I see the Chargers putting up around 31 points. I can't even find any path for the Raiders to get close to 24. Remember, this is a Raiders team that allowed Pittsburgh to put up 23 and Buffalo to score 38. I think we see a two-score win here. Projected score of 31-20. Take the Chargers minus the five and a half against the Raiders. Guys, before we get into the Arizona game, I want to make mention I have a promo code for you all. It is Prez1000. Uh, given that I am the number one most profitable expert at Wager Talk in the last 365 days and cashed in pretty much every sport across the board except baseball in the current season, I had to give out a year long package. Prez1000. Take $1,000 off of a full year and enjoy the whole year with me. Okay, Arizona plus 14 going into San Fran. The total here is 44. What a win for this Cards team. And man, this team could be and should be 2-1 and one on the year. Frankly, they could be 3-0 and oh on the year as they almost beat Washington in week one. And they fell apart in the second half against the Giants in week two. There's a lot of points here. But we saw how good the San Fran team is against the Giants. They were able to move the ball up and down the field. They put up close to 450 yards. But more importantly, are you ready? They had 26 first downs. Guys, I haven't counted 
the first downs the Chicago Bears have had in three games this year. But I will guess, I will bet that the Chicago Bears don't have 26 first downs on the whole year. San Fran did that in one week. San Fran has scored 30 points, exactly 30 points in each of their three games. They should be able to do that again. They should be able to do more than that. With that said, I cannot lay 14 here. The cards have shown a lot of moxie and a lot of fight this season. I'm going to look at the over. I know betting overs in a San Fran game might be a losing proposition all season long, but not this Sunday. The Cards have scored 28 points in their last two games and 28 points against the Dallas defense, which was supposed to be lights out. The Cards look like they are playing loose, free football, without any worry in the world. They ran for 222 yards against the Cowboys. They put up 178 yards in the air. Also, keep in mind, Joshua Dobbs had an 81 percent completion rate Sunday and is showing why he could be an NFL starter. He also had a 44-yard run and a 69-yard pass. He's becoming quite a problem to defend. If we assume San Fran can get us 30, and I think that's a fair assumption, all the card needs to do is put up 14 to get this over. I think that will happen. I think we see a 31 17 type of game here. There is no other way to bet this game but to take over the total in the Arizona San Francisco game. Now we turn our attention to New England plus six and a half, now seven. There are still some six and a halves out there, but there is money coming down on Dallas against Dallas. Obviously, that's who they're playing. And the total in this game is 43 and a half. Well, we're going to find out this week how good the Cowboys really are. Now, I'm not suggesting the Pats are some type of lipness test, but the boys have to bounce back. That's just, if they're a team that is going to make a playoff run, they cannot lose this game. The only question is, how many points are they going to win by? I think the Zona game was a total aberration. This Dallas team is so stacked It might be one of the best teams, if not the best team in all of football. I know. How could you say that, Prez? They just got beat by Arizona. Yeah, really? Remember the year the Rams won with Matthew Stafford? They lost at home against the New York Jets, who offhand won, I think, three games that entire year. These losses happen, and Dallas will regroup. They will refocus and they will slaughter their next opponent, which just so happens to be the New England Patriots. Offensively, the Cowboys have a good, not great, but good quarterback, a great running game, a loaded wide receiver core, and on defense, I think they have the best defender in the league in Parsons. I know people, Aaron Donald, TJ Watt, I think Parsons is better than them all. They also have a really good linebacker core and a stellar secondary. This Dallas team is so well balanced on both sides of the ball and really should have a field day against Jones and the Pats. I'm not scared to bet minus six and a half here, but for the record, if Dallas slaughtered the cards, I would not have touched this game. I just think it's a great spot for Dallas from a bounce back perspective. And let's be reasonable here. The Pats are not a very good team. They were like an inch away from losing to the Jets on a Hail Mary. I know the Jets' D is good and the Pats really couldn't move the ball, but I think this Dallas D is almost as good. And I think New England will continue to struggle on offense. New England has put up 14, 17, and 20 points so far this year. I don't think they get any more than 17 against the Cowboys. I know this D has looked good and held Miami to 24 uh, points. But given that this game is in Dallas on carpet, And after Dallas laid an egg, I think we see Dallas put up at least 27. I have a projected score error of 27 to 17, which happens to be right on the total, but three points more on the side. We're going to take Dallas minus six and a half. 
Now it's time for my teaser play. This is a two-team six-point teaser. I will be taking the Rams and Tampa Bay. That's the Los Angeles Rams and Tampa Bay. Guys, that's it for the NFL Presidential Address Week 4. Make sure to check out Part 1 and Part 2. Make sure to take advantage of my promo code PREZ1000. Make sure to bet my plays this coming Sunday. Lots of love. We'll see you next week.